What is up guys? It is your boy Speed here and today we are going to be talking about every single agility hero. Every single one. I'm going to be giving you a tip for every hero in the game from any mage all the way down to Weaver and let's get right into it. But before we do, quickly smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to support us. We put a lot of time into this. I'm, you know, I'm doing the voiceovers, the commentary. We have Hotan, the editing. Uh, we got Tom on the thumbnails, Ivan on the CEO and so many more people behind the scene that are, you know, making sure that we can put out videos every single day so that you guys can learn the game of Dota as fast as possible. So if you could do that, smash the like button, subscribe, and now let's also get our game leap subs. And now let's get into the video. <laughs> but quickly, before we do, I do want to announce that we just released the game leap website, right? So if you guys are looking for new content, we just put out this site. It's brand new. I have not been promoting it for the last two years now. If you don't know what it is at this point, we put new videos every single day that help you get to the next level. I'm not kidding. You don't believe me? Go check it out. Not reposted YouTube videos, literally new fresh content, right? So if you're looking for something, oh, it's not on YouTube, it's probably over there. So click the link down below, sign up today, and I hope to see you guys there. All right. So first off for any mage, this one, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm not going to start on too hard of a note. But for any mage, guys, think back to the recent TIs, right? Arteezy used to get made fun of for how much he was farming. The game against OG when he had uh, the S4 off lane Tiny and his team was getting run over by the Seb Enchantress and the Topson Wex Invoker. It, it seemed like there was nothing he could do to fight and yet he kept farming. And that makes sense because he couldn't fight. And a lot of people in the chat were like, uh, Arteezy, uh, just for me too he does. <laughs> and I know a lot of it's a joke. I get it. It's obviously a joke, but some people take that seriously. And a lot of players have this awful mentality around farming. Literally, I will constantly hear from my two, three, four, five, six game of students that their teammates flame them, hardcore flame them for trying to hit solid item timings on Animage as if they're supposed to be showing up to every single fight. Now, do you want to show up to no fights? No, you just want to show up to the good fights when the enemy team is overextending or you see a less track that's out of mana that you can blink in and kill. You want to hit your item timings first, split up the map and you do much better. And for Arc Warden, it's about the same. I, you know, the only real tip I have for Arc Warden that I think a lot of people just completely get wrong is that you need to actually show up to some fights, right? So people get this wrong on heroes like Arc, even AM to some extent. If your team is getting dove or if your team needs your help to some extent, you can send in the clone and continue to farm with your main hero. And for Arc Warden, this is the most underutilized mechanic that I see. People just do not send in their clone to fight. And I think it is far better to send it in to fight, you know, if there's a fight going on, otherwise use it to farm, than to farm with it, you know, if you have both options. And the reason for that is because it's going to help your team create space. Winning the fight is also going to allow your team to create more space and simply doing damage to other heroes will prevent them from pressuring you. So all in all, uh, showing up to fights early on as Arc Warden is very, very underrated, especially with the clone. Next up, we have Bloodseeker. Recently, I was watching a game where a Bloodseeker was picked with a Templar Assassin, and what he would do, he would Blood Rage her in the late game to give her infinite attack speed. I believe it's 140 at max, and so make sure you don't forget to do this. You can also put it on a friendly Zeus. Maybe your Zeus has a, a refresher and an Axe. Amp him up, then and if he casts his spells, the entire enemy team will instantly die. Then we have Bounty Hunter. Throw more shurikens. I can't stress this enough, guys. Shuriken is so good at level 1. The only thing is you have to buy some clary, some mangoes. But if you're laning, do not be afraid. And, and really consider taking shuriken over the invis, especially if you're off lane, right? Or maybe you're even safe lane or, you know, mid. I've, I've seen that a couple times. Don't be afraid to just harass with the shuriken. It's a really high damage nuke on a low cooldown and super underrated. Then we have Brood Mother. Far more. Hit timings. I know, basic, right? But very often Brood in the past was seen as this like fight, fight, fight hero. Not that that doesn't work, but very often unless you have the perfect matchup such as like Brood versus Invoker, it's going to be pretty hard for you to actually kill people, especially now that people are getting better and better at lane swapping. You know, they can just match you. Don't worry too much about always killing. Brood is like basically Alk, guys. The hero farms so fast, faster than almost anyone else especially in the early game. So really, if you're trying to get good at Brood, you need to learn the farming patterns. Next up, we have Clinks. I recommend you buy mangoes and you go hard on your opponent at level one. The reason why I say this is Clinks does scale well with levels, but a lot of other heroes that he might lane against, such as, you know, a Clockwork or a Tusk or a Centaur, 
a lot of these heroes, when they hit level 3, or even level 2 to some extent, they begin to have kill opportunity on clinks, right? Clinks often dies to these spikes, and therefore, I really recommend you put as much pressure as humanly possible at level 1. Also, keep in mind that Searing Arrows does not draw creep aggro, and therefore, you can hit them a lot at level 1 without drawing aggro. Next up, we have Drow. Same thing as clinks. I'm just going to really reiterate, your frost arrows do not pull creep aggro. They are a unique attack modifier, and therefore, you need to hit your opponent, because otherwise, when they get levels, if they are not low on HP, they can kill you. But if you've harassed them at level 1, and then they try to kill you at level 3, all of a sudden they can't make that play, or they do make that play and die, and then you have a good lane. Next up at Ember Spirit, consider taking the Flame Guard talent at level 10. I think it's super underrated. Generally, just playing around the Flame Guard talents, I think, is underrated overall, and I really like even considering going Veil with this sort of build. Then we have Faceless Void. So... For Faceless Void, you really want to consider taking an early point in time dilation against certain heroes. So, let's say you're playing against a Weaver. How does Weaver win Dota? He spams the Kuchi, kites around the fight. So, if you're playing Faceless Void, instead of being 404 like a lot of people go, consider going for. 1-3. I personally really like maxing out time walk as well, not time dilation, time walk first. So I really like the idea of being 4-1-3, taking a point in time dilation around level 7, 8, 9, 10, around those levels. And so yeah, whenever you consider fighting, it's really going to help you get kills. I don't think people realize how good time dilation is and how substantial the slow is. Next up, we have Gyrocopter. And I just want to give you guys a quick little build. I really like the idea of Mask of Madness with Phase Boots and a Wand, maybe a Wraith Band as well, into a BKB. Uh, there's a lot of builds I've been seeing on Gyrocopter. A lot of drums, Ags Rush. I just personally feel like this one is pretty good. I hope to see more people experiment with it. But you go Mask of Madness if you're having a you know an even lane or you can't harass them or or even a bad lane, max out your flat cannon, use the Mask of Madness to farm, and yeah, you're going to become huge. Then we have Juggernaut. Juggernaut! So what you want to do is take more aggressive farm. Very often when I just watch a lot of carry players, what do they do? They sit on their side of the map, they hit the triangle for 30 minutes, they come out with like 20% less net worth than they could have if they farmed aggressively and pushed in proper lanes, and then they lose. They also put no map pressure, no tower pressure, they don't take away camps from the enemy team, and so on. So, well... What do you do? Just take more aggressive farm. All you need to keep in mind for this point is if they have a Slaughter or a Bane who can cancel you, well, then maybe you don't want to do it. Next up, we have Lone Druid. For Lone Druid, I really recommend you learn how to win the lane. Now, is that simple? Could you apply that tip to any hero? Well, yeah, obviously, if it's just good, you know, you just win the lane, right? Lol. But for Lone Druid, I think it's particularly important because of the hero's potential. You have a lot of damage. If you use the bear and your hero at the same time, you hit at the same time, you can burst creeps. You can get a lot of denies. Then you can just hardcore trade. Why? Because if they ever go on your main hero, you can just life steal up with your bear, right? You can just heal your main hero with your bear by auto attacking. And then the same thing, you're, you know, your bear isn't that strong at level one. So be careful about harassing too much level one. I've seen this happen quite a bit. I even played against a lone druid recently. He tried to just constantly harass me and I ended up killing his bear because it's not tanky anymore. So just be careful about killing your bear. Next up, we have Luna. Honestly, who picks a zero? I don't know. Just don't die. Take points and loosen beam like at level one and level two. Nuke them down. There you go. Next up for Dusa. My tip is that you use your movement speed ultimate to show up to fights. Now you might be saying movement speed ultimate. Stone gaze gives Medusa movement speed. Percentage based movement speed. And so you actually can fight very well early into the game. Stone gaze is super strong. They also buffed it to cost less mana recently. I believe from 200 to 100. And so showing up to early game fights is totally legit. Even taking stone gaze at level 6 or level 7 especially around level 8 level 9 I, I wouldn't skip it too much as people are doing in the past just because it's very valuable now they've buffed it they've buffed it they've buffed it you use it to show up to fight you use it to clean up and even defend towers it's very useful then we have meepo i don't know who plays meepo so i'm not even gonna give you a tip just farm that's my tip marana arrow range creeps in lane the reason why you want to arrow range creeps in lane is because it pushes the lane then when you push the lane what you can do is pull the lane then you can deny creeps. Also, when you arrow the range creep, then all of a sudden, the opponent has to overextend for your range creep. They have to secure it, which is typically where you can harass and kill people. If you don't understand that concept, well, basically, you know, going for range creeps is when opponents have to extend the most, and so you harass them the most. And so if you do not have to overextend for their range creep, you take less damage, they take more damage. Next up, we have Monkey King. Put more points in your W, right? The tree dance. If you have won your lane, or the lane is even, take more points in your tree dance. People will very often all in on the Q and the E and then they just can't farm. So if your lane is going kind of well, just go 242 and you'll do much better because you can actually shove waves and farm. Then we have Morphling. 
you have to spam Morphling if you want to consider playing Morphling. Naga, position yourself between mid and a side lane. So, you want to be basically in aggressive jungles. Why? Why do you want to be in the enemy team's jungle? Why do you want to be in an aggressive part of the map? Why is that a good idea? The reason why that's a good idea is because then you can cut two creep waves. You can send two illusions to the top wave. You can send two illusions to the mid wave. All of a sudden, the enemy team can't push. They have all of their towers being pressured and the game becomes very awkward for them. Next up, we have Neek's Assassin. Don't be afraid to miss your stun. Use it more in the lane. Then for Pango, learn to punish range creeps hard. So you know what I talked about in the Mirana example where people have to overextend for range creeps? Pango is particularly good at punishing this, especially against heroes that don't have nukes, because he can disarm them. So instead of trying to deny range creeps as Pango, and this is kind of a tip for a lot of heroes, but Pango is, is good because he has a disarm, auto attack them. Is there a Sven about to go for a range creep? And you know, he doesn't have his stun. Auto attack him. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Don't go for deny. Hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. Splash buckle. Bada bing, bada boom. A lot of damage. Then we have Phantom Assassin, throw daggers for CS, pick with the lane dominator and ask for pulls. I know that's not one tip, that's three tips, but please, you need to do whatever it takes, whatever it takes to win the lane, to sustain the lane, to do all right, right? So throw daggers for CS, do not overextend for range creeps, pick with heroes like Undying Bane, etc., and, and ask for pulls so you can farm under tower. Then for PO, use Phantom Rush more when you're farming. You know the third spell that you're supposed to max out? A lot of people don't realize it gives you 44 bonus agility, so reset the cooldown. Are you hitting a camp and it came back up? Run backwards for a second, run Phantom Rush forwards, and they're going to do a lot more damage. For Razor, spam your spells in the jungle to farm. This hero is very often looked at only as a fighter, because that's kind of what he was in the past, but things have changed. Use your ultimate, the active, and your max out Q, which you should have around level 7, depending on the build you go, or level 9. And yeah, just, just wipe through the jungle. For Ricky, hit a faster defusal timing. I cannot stress this one enough. I can't. Because if you hit a faster defusal timing, you can do more. So very often people will make one major mistake on Rick. They will fight, 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 fight. Sometimes it will work out. I'm not denying that. After all, Ricky, uh, with a good laning stage and a couple stat items, can be one of the most brutal early game heroes in the game, even without a defusal. However, if your game is going mediocre or, you know, for whatever reason, it's hard for you to pressure the enemy team. Maybe they have a faceless void safe lane who can just ignore you and or chrono you. You know, then you just want to go for a defusal timing. So push in some waves, hit that defusal, then go for kills. It gives you a lot more opportunities. For SF. Spam Razor level 1, shoves in the wave, does a bunch of damage, it's very useful. For Slurk, split push more and fight less. A lot of people get into the habit of Slurk as seeing him as this hero that needs to build up permanent agility and constantly go for pickoffs and buy a Shadow Blade and run around and kill the enemy Crystal Maiden 10 times in a row, but you know what happens when you do that? You become under farm, you lose all of your timings, you die, and things do not work out, so make sure you split push occasionally and look for better fights, not quantity, quality. Then for Sniper, make stacks early on and pull the camps together to farm a shrapnel. This is very useful, right? Sniper's really good at taking stacks. I think people forget this, and so they never stack with the Sniper. You know, after all, he only does quote-unquote single target damage, right? Because he right-clicks. But, you know, shrapnel is just such a brutally good spell uh, that needs to be utilized more, especially when farming. For Spectre, consider Blade Mail. I really like this item. I feel like the Blade Mail item, in general, is a bit underrated on some heroes right now. After all, the 20% reflect it does, just, you know, every time someone hits you, is quite good for farming, and on Spectre, it works very well with your dispersion too, so I like this item. The only thing is you're going to need some stats as well, otherwise you'll lack HP and the blade mail doesn't have as much value, so definitely at least pick up a wand. For TA, call Roche when you hit Deso. Did you get a Deso at minute 15? Consider calling Roche. Did you get it at minute 17? Call Roche. 20, 21, call Roche. For Terror Blade, ask for ancient stacks and use meta to farm it. A lot of people forget on Terror Blade to use meta to farm. They see it as the fighting, the tower pushing ability, but you really want to use it to amplify your farm and get big. So ask for stacks, especially ancient stacks, and use the meta to farm it. For Troll Warlord, consider this weird build where you don't go quelling at level 1. Instead of buying a quelling blade to secure CS in the early lane, buy like a bunch of branches, some tangos, maybe a mango, a circlet, some slippers, and hit people. Troll's really good at this, spam your W and bop them down. For Ursa, do not overcommit at level 1! You know how bad Ursa is at level 1? Quite bad, you do very minimal amounts of damage, you have no ability to lock people down, and you don't have any mobility either. You're pretty fast, but that's about it. So do not overcommit at level 1, wait till you're at least level 3, even level 5, to start getting aggressive. For Venge, look for aggressive smoke swaps. Are you level 6 and feel like you can never set up any plays? Well, the play I recommend you look going for is to buy a smoke when you hit level 6. They're 50 gold now, it costs absolutely nothing. Walk to the mid lane, swap the enemy mid laner with synergy with your mid laner, and kill them. It's very effective. 
for Venno. <laughs> you know what it is, guys. My one tip, hit up the jungle. And for Viper, your Q gives you attack range. Abuse this. People don't realize it. I didn't realize it. I was taught this recently. I, I somehow didn't know, even though I've played probably around 100 games of Viper. But your Q gives you attack range, so that's pretty cool. Abuse it in the laning stage and hit the opponent a lot with a lot of mangoes and a lot of stats. And last, but finally, and certainly not least, we have Weaver. Consider taking your bugs at level 4. A lot of people will skip it till later on, they want to max out the W and the E as soon as possible, but bugs are absurdly broken in the laning stage. I mean this, especially if your opponent has bad base attack time and they can't kill it, bugs do a lot of damage, they reduce your armor by way too much, and cause the opponent to focus their right clicks on a bug and not you, which is a huge deal. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video where I gave one tip for every single agility hero, smash the like button. It did take me a while, so I appreciate all the support you could possibly give me, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dodo or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general, and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me, but I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there, and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes. They skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below. Get your discount right now by clicking the link. Sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there, and I hope to see you there right now, so click it, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.